Hi, this is Justin from Seraform, and today we're going to talk a bit about Microsoft Entra's identity governance solution. Now, if you haven't checked out our past videos on Entra, I encourage you to do so. Check them out on our socials. You're going to learn a bit about some of the other products and the value it can bring to your organization. Now, back to identity governance. How many of us have either been onboarded as a new employee or have other employees onboard with us? And on day one, you just don't have the right tools to get started. You're super motivated to go, but you don't have the right access. You don't know how to access things or where they are. And it makes things difficult and it could be demotivating. And so identity lifecycle management allows us to fix this problem and provide an HR driven set of operations that allow users to be onboarded and ready to go with the right access at the right time. And this whole process can be integrated directly with our HR HCM systems, including Workday HCM or SAP success factors, so that when folks join the organization or prior to their joining, we can kick off certain workflows to provision their account, enable it, get them the right access and the right groups to the right apps, all of that good stuff. And of course, when they move or change roles within the organization, we can adjust those permissions accordingly. And lastly, when they leave the organization, we wanna make sure that their account is disabled and all their access is removed. Again, this can all be automated using lifecycle management, part of Microsoft Entra, and driven by your HR systems. Additionally, another interesting feature is entitlement management, which allows users to request access to apps or resources that they're entitled to. Maybe, for example, we have a user who starts in sales, but six months later moves into an external sales role and they need access to Salesforce and there's licensing involved and we need to make sure approvals are taking place. Instead of submitting an IT ticket, which can also often take days if not weeks to get sorted, we can provide the ability for that user to log in and request access to Salesforce themselves and have the manager approve it. So it's directly between the employee and the manager and we don't need an IT ticket. This is fully auditable and controlled within our environment. This is not only allowed or encouraged for our internal employees, but it's also possible to take place for external folks as well, such as vendors who might need access or limited access to resources within our environment. Let's jump into the portal and take a closer look. In today's demo, we're going to look at how a new user gets onboarded to the organization, how we enable the account and provision their access. Additionally, we're going to see what it looks like when the user moves from a regular sales org over to an external sales org where they're going to need access to Salesforce. And lastly, we're going to take a look at how we can offboard this employee, disable their account, and remove their access. And so as you can see here, I'm logged into the Microsoft Entra Admin Center at entra.microsoft.com. I can manage all of the Entra products. Now before we get started, I just want to take a look at the user account in question here. And so we've already pre-provisioned this account using our HR system and the account is here, but it is disabled. As you can see here, the account's disabled. This was all provisioned using the integration between our Workday HCM system and lifecycle management. And also, this particular account isn't a member of any groups, and so the account's been created, we're ready for our demo, no access has been granted just yet. Perfect. And now, what we're gonna have to do is jump over to the lifecycle management section of the Entra portal. So under identity governance, we find lifecycle workflows. And so within lifecycle workflows, we've got a few created, but let's take a look at what, a, what type of workflows we can create. So we have the ability to create joiner, mover, or lever type of workflows. For example, you know, tasks that we need to make sure take place before the user starts on their first day or what things they need on their first day. We also have workflows we can use to terminate the employee, offboard the employee, and even post offboarding an employee. For example, deleting their mailbox and account after 90 days. Perfect. So we're going to go over and take a look at the three workflows for this demo, starting with onboarding pre-hire employees. So again, these are the tasks that we want to kick off before the employee's first day. 
Let's open this up, take a closer look at the tasks that are involved here. So there's only one task. We're trying to keep it simple here. So we'll go view tasks. And under here we can see it's going to generate a temporary access password and send an email to somebody. So if we open that up, the email will be sent to the manager of the user as it's configured in AD. And this temporary access password is going to be a one-time use password that's only usable within eight hours of it being provisioned. So this is the type of workflow we want to automate kicking off within eight hours of the user starting. And you can see here again, the, the user's manager is demo user one as per their AD account. And so under demo user one, the manager's account, they've already received the email with the temporary access password. This is the password they're gonna to give to the user when they show up for work on day one. Great. And so that's all sorted and that workflow has been kicked off. We want to look at the second workflow, which is the workflow that's going to happen on their first day. And really, this is a type of workflow we need to kind of enable their account and do some other things. But let's take a look at the execution conditions for this particular workflow. Like how and when does this thing get triggered? And so it's going to trigger on zero days from the employee hire date as it's defined in the user's AD account, as well as it's going to be applicable to any user who is in the sales department. So that's perfect. That's perfect. That applies to this particular user. Let's look at the tasks that this workflow is going to trigger. It's going to do three things. It's going to first enable the user's account, send them a nice welcome email, and add the user to some AD groups to give them the access they need to perform. Now, normally we would trigger this when the user starts on day zero, but in this case, that day hasn't been reached yet. So we're gonna just trigger it on demand for the purpose of this demo. And we'll run that workflow. As you can see, it's completed, it's fairly quick. And all of those tasks should be completed by now. So let's go take a look at the user's account in AD to see how that's reflected. So if we find now demo user two, we can see the account is now enabled, which is what we would expect. The workflow took care of that. And they've been added to the sales users group. So they have all the access that a typical sales department user needs to perform their job. So demo user two shows up for work. The manager provides the temporary access password. And we're gonna go ahead and log in with that password to the user's mailbox. And we're gonna look at the, for that third item, which is the welcome email. As you can see, it has arrived and it's welcoming the user to the organization. Now we can customize this email for you to make it look and feel however you want, include links to any type of resources or documentation the user should be reviewing on their first day or first week. But that's all been taken care of in a single workflow. Now, if we fast forward six months, the user gets promoted into external sales where they need to use Salesforce. If I try to log in to Salesforce as user two, I get blocked. Access is denied. I don't have access to Salesforce, nor do I have a license to use it. And so I need to request that access. We're gonna use entitlement management to fix this for us. But before we do that, I just wanna show you the application as it's registered within Azure AD. So we've configured Salesforce in our Azure AD and configured it for single sign-on SSO. And if I find Salesforce here and I look at the users and groups that have permission to use it, we don't have anybody. So nobody can use Salesforce just yet. Demo user two must be the first employee within the sales org. I don't know, but uh, they don't have access. And so we're gonna flip over to entitlement management and use it to provision that access in a self-service way. So first off, we created a catalog. A catalog is going to contain the types of resources and extensions, if you will, that will be provided or leveraged when this access is requested. So if we look at the resources first off, we can see that we have a application, which is Salesforce and a SharePoint site 
for external sales. I can add additional resources to this catalog, such as adding them to additional AD groups or more apps or more SharePoint Online sites. But for this demo, this is all they need. They just need to be a member of that group and have access to SharePoint, Salesforce rather. So now if we head over to custom extensions, this is where we can configure Logic Apps to kick off. Now this gets interesting. I've configured a Logic app here to send a very custom email to the user, welcoming them to Salesforce. I can create a Logic app to do anything I like and trigger it as part of this catalog. Now these catalogs are configured with what we call access packages. So I've configured that catalog with this request Salesforce access package. This is the package that the user will be requesting. So Let's take a look at the policy of this access package to better understand how it works, what are the conditions on which this thing is gonna be provisioned, all that good stuff. So if I edit this, we're gonna walk through this wizard together. We go over to the request tab, we can see that it applies to all users in the org. We can also make this applicable to external users. If you have external vendors who need access to your resources, we can make this these access packages for them. It does require approval. The approval will be the user's manager, which in this case is demo user one. And you know they need to provide justification. This has been enabled, all this good stuff. Next, we look at requester information. This is the type of information we are asking the requester. In this case, which region are you located in? Our Salesforce is configured for different regions. And so depending on which region you operate in, you need access to those specific resources. This is a required question that the user must answer when they request this package. The package, we can set an expiration date or time. We can set it to never expire if we like. We can also enforce access reviews to make sure that somebody is looking at the access that's been provided by this package on a regular basis to make sure that those who have it have it and those who no longer need it, we can fix that and, and clean that up. Next, we're looking at custom extensions. These are the stages on which this access package takes. And so when the assignment is granted, when the access package has been approved, we wanna go ahead and send a welcome email. We're using that Logic app that I had created to send that welcome email. Perfect. So now let's log in as the user to request this access. Now, instead of logging into an ITSM system, we're gonna actually log into myaccess.microsoft.com. We don't have to submit a ticket. We don't have to wait for approvals. And you know that could take weeks before I, I wanna get started now. And so under here, I can see all of the access packages that are available to me. So we're gonna go ahead and request Salesforce access. This is that same access package we were just looking at, which is gonna give me access to the Salesforce app. I specify my region so that it can provision the necessary Salesforce access there. And my justification is I'm hungry for more sales. I'm very eager to get started. So let's go ahead and submit that. And at this point, this user's manager should be receiving an email indicating that I've requested access. And so there's that email right there in their inbox. And we can see all the details surrounding this particular request. I'm gonna go ahead and approve this for the user. Now, this is gonna take me into myaccess.microsoft.com again, but this time I'm gonna log in as demo user one, which is the user's manager. And from here, it's gonna take me to the approvals section where I can see all pending approvals that I need to look at. So demo user one has requested Salesforce access. Let's go ahead and approve that. But before I do, I wanna understand a little more details around this particular request. So that I'm giving it Salesforce access, they're hungry for more sales, that's awesome. And the package details, what's it gonna give them access to? Okay, Salesforce as a standard user. Perfect, I'm okay with that, they need that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and approve this We'll give a reason just so that we can audit and report on this later if need be. So I like their attitude. I mean, who wouldn't? They're so eager to get started. This is the type of sales org you wanna build. And so that has been approved. And at this point, the demo user two rather should receive an email. There's a welcome email to Salesforce saying, you now have a license to access Salesforce from my apps or just click here. We can customize this email to look and feel and include any links we need. 
Now from myapps.microsoft.com, I see Salesforce just popped up. That's fantastic. I could easily just click this and it boots me into Salesforce. But before we jump into Salesforce, I just want to look at that enterprise app with you again to see what's actually been done. And we can see here, Demo User 2 has been added to the users and groups under this enterprise app. So instead of IT having to do this themselves, uh, the, the, the workflow took care of this for us. So now as the user, if I try to sign in using my Azure AD account to Salesforce, I should be able to log in. Drum roll, please. There you go. It's now logged me in to Salesforce and I have access to the Northeast region set of resources within my Salesforce environment. It was all provisioned automatically using workflows between the user and their manager. Great. So now that was in title management. Shifting back to lifecycle workflows, we're gonna take a look at the last workflow just to end off this demo offboarding an employee. So a few years later, the employee decides to move on and we need to decommission their account. And so we have three tasks associated with this workflow. One is gonna disable the user account, another remove them from all groups and apps and remove the user from all teams that they're a member of. So that's great. Again, we can integrate this with your HR system so that these workflows are kicked off when the HCM, the HR system, tells it so. HR usually handles this on their end as well. And so IT can follow their lead. So we're gonna kick it off on demand because we don't wanna wait. This is a demo. And if I do a refresh, you're gonna see just how quickly this happens. You see it's in progress there. In a moment here, I'm gonna refresh and it should be completed. There you go, it's completed that quickly. I mean, not even a human can do all of those things that fast. And this is super accurate and controlled within my environment and throughout my systems. So going back to the user, let's just see how that's reflected one last time. So demo user two, the account is now disabled, which is great, that's what I expect. And they've been removed from all AD groups, which is perfect. So job done and you know everybody's happy, HR is happy. We don't have this account sitting around still enabled with all of this access and nobody's using it. Everybody's happy and we can move on. Hey, so that's it for identity governance for today. I know we didn't cover all of the features that identity governance offers like privileged identity management or access reviews. If you'd like us to go further in depth with any of these or any other products within the Microsoft Security and Compliance stack, don't hesitate to reach out to us, leave a comment below. We'd even be happy to host a custom demo or workshop within your organization that matches your needs and demonstrates the value that your industry or your organization can get out of this. Again, follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube to stay tuned with all upcoming demos. Until then, stay safe and have fun.